This is example nine in our vector topic where we had a look in example eight at the start of the equation of a straight line in three dimensions. If you haven't watched example eight, go back and do it now because this kind of might not make much sense. Um, so just to, we're looking at parametric form. We, we said that there are three forms, vector, parametric, and symmetric. So just flipping back to um, previous slide here, that's what we learned in example eight. And this is the key thing that I highlighted, R equals A plus GD is a vector equation of a straight line. So we're going to develop that by changing the vectors into basic component form. So we're defining the actual vectors that are in that uh, form. R is our point that lies on the line, and that's got the key x, y, z parts. We know that even in a, the equation of a straight line, there are numbers that in two dimensions. We've got values like the gradient, y-intercept, but we have to have x and y uh, letters, symbols, within the equation so that we can demonstrate the relationship between any x and y uh, points on the line. So in the same way, we need x, y, and z in our equation, and that comes from point r, position vector r. We know that a is a point on the line, so we define, we're going to use a, b, and c as the components of that, and d is our direction vector, and we're going to use l, m, and m. We're going to use numbers normally, but just for this theory part, we're going to use L, M, and N for the components of the direction vector. So if we swap all of them in, uh, then, of course, in the right places, we get that R is X, Y, Z equals A, B, C plus T times L, M, N. So you probably know uh, the idea of parametric form. Uh, parametric functions are functions where the individual um, X and Y uh, coordinates are expressed as a function of a, an extra parameter, t or whatever other letter. In other words, they're split up, the equations are split up into x equals something, y equals something, z equals something. So that's what we're going to do here. We're actually going to slice this equation here that we've got with the, the parameters. Oops, I meant to just drag this. Here we go. So I'm going to look at this slice here, x with A and L, and of course the L part is being multiplied by this parameter T. So we can extract that top row and say that the X coordinate is equal to the X component of uh, point A, so that's letter A plus T times L, which is the X uh, aspect of the direction vector. So we're just taking a slice, all the kind of x axis parts, x equals a plus t times l. And we can take a slice of the y direction and say that the y coordinate is b plus t times m. And we can take a slice of the z direction and say that z equals c plus t n. We'll get three different equations, each with component parts uh, of these vectors, and we call this the parametric form of the equation of a line. So a parametric form will actually generate three separate equations, each with a section of the point that we know, and each with a section of the direction vector, always multiplied by this parameter t. Okay, so let's have a look at example 9. Find the parametric equations of the line through 6, 3, negative 1, and parallel to a given vector. So we've still got the, the same kind of information. We're still seeing that we've got some parallel vector whose direction we know. In other words, the gradient of both of these lines is effectively at 2, negative 3, negative 1. And our kind of given line L... Well, we're saying that there's a point on it somewhere that's 6, 3, and negative 1. Um, and we we know that there's some point R, which is our kind of variable point X, Y, Z. So uh, what can we do? We can construct the uh, vector equation, first of all. So we've got R equals A plus T times D. But we have now component versions of each of these. We know that R, from our explanation there, is going to be X, Y, and Z. 
we know that well, the vector A is the position vector of point A, which is 6, 3, negative 1. And we've got our parameter T multiplied by direction vector D, which we've defined as 2, negative 3, and negative 1. So that's the kind of vector form again. We haven't, we've really just added X, Y, Z instead of R. But what we can do then is slice it off. Okay, so my first parametric equation is we can so I'm going to write down equation of the line. Okay, x equals six plus two t. I'm going to write them down underneath each other. The second equation is going to involve that second row here. Y equals three. Okay, it's plus it's, it's t times negative 3, so it's going to be 3 minus 3t. And my third line is going to involve these negative 1s. z equals negative 1 minus t. So there we have the equation of the line in parametric form. We could write them out on, in one big line. Also, at small point, we could, of course, write them down um, like this with the the t parameter first you sometimes see that written out and of course they mean the same thing okay so that's the equation of the line in parametric form that's really useful particularly when we're trying to substitute individual x y and z uh, coordinate parts into another equation but it's not the way in which we normally express the overall uh, equation of a line because it's still got this parameter t and it's a bit it's like we don't know what that is it's just some kind of a, a unspecified uh, slightly random value just now okay so what we want to do is to find an equation a form of the equation that doesn't actually have the parameter t in it and that's the symmetric or cartesian form that we're going to have a look at now in example 10 so you can join me there